Hey, Valley Metal. Welcome back to another G67 math video. Tonight we're going to be using sampling to predict outcomes. But before we do that, let's take a look at our trivia question. Name the five top U.S. pizza restaurant brands with the most sales. In other words, these could be takeout, eat-in, top five selling pizza chains in the United States. All right. Officially tonight our target, I can use sampling to predict outcomes. Let's do this thing. Casey got on base 21 out of 28 times in his first eight softball games. If he bats 140 times this season and keeps up this pace, predict how many times he will reach base by the end of the season. Well, we have a sample here of 21 at bats, or sorry, 21 times on base out of 28. That's a fraction, part to whole. 21 on base out of 28 total at bats. We want to know how many times on base out of 140 times. We can use a ratio proportion to find that second equal fraction there. So when you do that, you set up your original fraction and you set up your second fraction next to each other in a little box. Multiply diagonally 140 times 21 and then divide the product by 28. Multiply diagonally and then divide. If you do that, you'll find that it's 105. 105 times he will probably reach base. You can also look at that as a percentage. 105 divided by 140 gives me 0.75. Multiply that by 100, I got 75% of the time he will reach base. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to review real quickly how you use that box. For those of you who may be watching this video for the first time, let me just pull up the calculator. And let me flip back here and come back. All right. So my calculator should be there. There it is. So when you use the box, you multiply two numbers diagonally. So these ones here, I'll just actually even do it backwards this time. I'll do 21, and I'll multiply that times the 140. And that's going to give you a product or the answer to a multiplication question. That's going to equal this. Now I can divide that then by this third number, 28. It doesn't matter which way you go as long as you multiply diagonally and then divide the other numbers and you get 105. There's your answer. That'll give you two equal fractions or if you set it up as ratio side to side and have a blank spot, you can get a two. So we'll just review that so that I can uh, work a little more quickly through the uh, problems tonight. All right, sample. Uh, a sample is a selection taken from a larger group or the population. That's so that you can examine or predict something about the larger group, predict a trend. An unbiased sample, that's something that represents the entire population. Everybody agrees with it. I mean, it's representative. Okay, and a biased sample favors one or more parts. And I think you'll understand this by best by looking at some examples. So suppose 100 people were asked what their favorite sport was while leaving the Super Bowl. 94 said it was football. Do you think this is a biased or unbiased sample? I agree, it's biased. Of course they like football. They paid a big bucks to go to the Super Bowl. All right, let's take a look at another one. To evaluate the defect rate of its phones, a phone company tests every hundredth phone off the production line. Two of them were out of 2,500 were found to be defective. Is this a biased or unbiased sample? Yeah, I think it's unbiased too. I mean, it's random. It represents the entire population. Um, how about this one? I asked 35 people leaving a dog show to name their favorite pet. 33 people said there were dogs. Random, I'm sorry, biased or unbiased? Doy, biased, of course they like dogs. They're at a dog show. All right, 15 names are randomly selected from the VMSS student database. I don't even need to finish. You already know that's unbiased. It's, they're randomly selected. Different genders, different ages. How about this one? To predict the number of damaged packages of chips out of a thousand cases, the top two cases are inspected. Is this biased or an unbiased sample? This is, this is biased. What if Larry, the forklift guy, had a bad day and ran those two cases into the wall? What if Fred sat on to them, sat on them? You, you need to inspect more than the first two. You know, you have to randomly select some of the different cases and inspect them. All right. Let's move on. Uh, so let's use sampling to predict the uh, outcomes in these, um, or predict the uh, answers to these problems here. Last year when I hosted the holiday party, 33 people came. They drank 4.5 gallons of my special, or my spiced cider, apple cider. 
This year we plan to have 54 people attend. Predict how much cider I will need based upon last year's sample. Well, we had this sample here of 33 people to 4.5 gallons. So I set up a little racial proportion box. 33 is to 4.5 as 54 people are to how many gallons? Okay, multiply diagonally, divide, 7.36. About 7.36 uh, gallons of spicy cider. I'm going to need to buy 8 gallons if I you know, want to have a little extra or make sure I have enough based upon last year's sample. They could drink 6 gallons. They could drink 8. We don't know, but we're using last year's sample to predict it. Okay? All right, let's take a look at another sample. Uh, study the sales results from a random two-week period of snack shack, sh snack shack sales. Predict how many Oreos will be sold for the year if the Snack Shack is open 39 weeks. How many cases will be needed if they're packaged 24 per case? We have two questions here. So first of all, we have to look at, you know, how many, how many Oreos will be sold. Well, we know that in two weeks, they sold 27 Oreos. This is our sample. So in 39 weeks, how many will we sell? Ratio proportion box. 39 times 27 divided by 2, 526.5 packages will be sold. Approximately. Obviously, we're not going to sell a half package unless I get hungry and eat a few. But we can take that 526.5. We can divide it by 24, right? That's how many per case. We'll find out that it's 21.9375. We're going to need about 22 cases if sales hold steady, okay? See how I added that if sales hold steady? Again, it's a prediction based upon a sample. It, it won't be exact, but it should be representative. If we use a representative example, it should be close. All right, uh, time for you to try a couple. How about this one? Another Snack Shack one. Study the sales results from a random two-week period of Snack Shack sales. Predict how many Pringles will be sold for the year if the Snack Shack is open 39 weeks. What percentage of the chips sales are for chips? Round your answer to the nearest whole percent. Go ahead and pause and see if you can do that. A little bit different. All right, let's take a look. Well, our sample was two to thirty-two, two snack or two weeks, thirty-two uh, packages of Pringles. So, if we set this up, two is to thirty-two is to thirty-nine weeks is to blank. It's six hundred and twenty-four. Well, that's six hundred twenty-four packages, and what we have now. There's a total of, then we have to figure out, well, what percentage here of the sales are Pringles or chips, I asked. And these are cookies, fudge stripers are, and Oreos are cookies. So I added them all up, and I had a total of 82. So there's a total of 82 items, and there were 32 chips. Those were the Pringles. So I want to know what percentage out of 100% is equal to 32 out of 82. Again, this is racial proportion box. Pop it in, 100 times 32 divided by 82, 39% when you round to the nearest whole percent. Okay? All right. Let's see how you do on one more example, and I'll get you out the door. Tara charted the spinner results while playing the game of life. The spinner landed on the number 3, 30 times out of 100. Use this sample to predict how many times the spinner will land on 3 in a game with 175 spins. Go ahead and pause the video. All right. Let's take a look. We had a sample of 30 threes out of a total of 100 spins. We want to know how many out of 175. Again, ratio of proportion, 175 times 30 divided by 100 gives us 52.5. You know, basically, 52 or 53 spins is what we can expect to, you know, to land on three. I'd say 53. I'd round up. All right, ticket to the show. In a random sample of 30 students at the VMSS that eat hot lunch, 17 chose Italian Dunkers as their favorite hot lunch. Predict how many Italian Dunker hot lunch entrees the cook should prepare if 800 kids will eat on Italian Dunker Day. It's a light up Italian Dunkers. Go ahead. Put that down. All right. Once you get that answer figured out, add 10 to it if Mr. Persons is going to eat hot lunch that day because he's big fan of Italian dunkers. Nah, just kidding. Just leave your answer alone. All right, here we go. What are the top five U.S. pizza restaurant brands with the most sales? The number one, I thought was going to be Domino's, was Pizza Hut. The number two one is Domino's. Papa John's, Little Caesar's, 
followed by Papa Murphy's Take and Bake. Interesting. Very interesting. This one has the restaurant involved, even though you don't see as many of them anymore. But there we go. A lot of sales. We're talking 540 billion. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.